Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. I've been off the grid for a little bit. I do apologize, but rest assured, I am working on this mini lathe diligently behind the scenes, and I am actually putting the finishing touches to the final components. Things like these tiny little handles for the hand wheel, some bushings, spacers, just everything to take the slop out of the apron. And coming across a little piece right here, I wanted to show you a trick that I use. This is an 0625 reamed hole. That is an 0625 pin. Now, as much as I don't want to touch that with my bare hands because it'll tarnish overnight. It is going to be a nice snug fit when it goes in there. But I would like to press it in. Since this is a very cheap metal here, well, I mean, it's a it's an aluminum casting, of course, and this is brass. It's not a whole lot of meat for these guys to squeeze together, so I'm going to show you the trick. If I can readjust my camera here. There we go. I'm going to take the back side of this component with an automatic center punch set on a really light pressure with a 90 degree tip on it. This is the side I want the part to rest on. So I'm going to center punch the back side of this hole. This is not deburred. Don't deburred if you're going to do this. I'm going to put it against my bench just to have it backed up to something. And if you got really good eyes, you can see that it did displace some of the material. And that's a good thing. That can also be done with a small ball bearing for all you guys that are scrambling for the keyboard. Put a ball bearing on there just maybe twice the size of the hole and give it a smack. It's going to do the same thing. It's a good way to close up a hole if you have to. Now this will go to the point of interference. And I'll just tap it on. Let's watch for the seat. Hope this thing doesn't fly off the table. I don't know what to expect. There we go. And done. They say to pin it over from behind, you can also drill a hole in that, install a light slip fit, and use the same type of punch to flare the end of the brass component, but I like to just drive it in with a little hammer, make sure everything is going to behave itself. Now let's stick this thing on the part and see what happens. Before I assemble the hand wheel back onto the apron here, I want to point something out, change that I made to this model. I've been making a few along the way, and that is entirely up to you. If you want to do that, you just go right ahead, but the plans will get you there. Plans call for a straight 1 8 diameter, about a 3 millimeter pin to be pressed into the apron to hold these gears. Not a problem, holds them just fine. But the opportunity for the gears to walk forward while it's moving back and forth is present. There is nothing to constrain these gears to this apron. If these gears walk too far in this direction over here, they will encounter the front of the bed and leave scrape marks on the front of the bed. Well, you know. Just not going to let that happen, guys. So here's what I did to fix my model. And I think this is a really solid suggestion for anybody that may be watching. And <laughs> anybody that, anybody that may be watching. Anyway, put a counterbore in the smaller of the two gears. It's about a 190 counterbore, 50 thousandths of an inch deep. I made a headed pin. Teflon spacer that goes down in that counterbore. Flush. Now on the back. Got another bushing that goes on the back. Keep the gears from rubbing on the apron itself. And now when this pin is pressed in this hole, Those gears are going to rest 15 thousandths of an inch off that surface on a Teflon washer 
and the head of this pin is also going to engage the Teflon washer that's right there. So all I need to do now is just squeeze this all together until this pin is flush with this face and all should be well. Everything should be constrained adequately. I'm going to take that off camera for a second, press it together, come back. We're going to put the crank on see what that looks like. Stick around. Got the new setup successfully pressed in and any projection of the pin over the top will be in play. Let's see if we can show you what just got. Not much, but it still spins freely and it will not fall off. And the pin is flush with the outside cast. So let's put the hand wheel on, take a look at that. This is the hand wheel sub-assembly. Teflon washer on the gear side, Teflon washer on the handle side. Nice little bevel washer holding the screw down. Let's see if I can do this without shaking it off the table and losing everything. That'd be cool. It is late in the afternoon and I am extremely hungry right now. Anybody with a fast metabolism knows that's not a good thing. So here we go. You're coming through from behind. Line them up till they mesh. Check it. Beautiful. Teflon washer on from the front. Actually, these are white delver, and I'm not going to lie to you, these are white delver. That is the culmination of a lot of work. Actually, an incredible amount of work is just, just screwing that hand wheel, just cleaning up the casting on the hand wheel, making it look like it never had any burrs on it. It's got a different finish on the outside than it does on the faces. I shined it up a bit just to give it some accent. And let's take a look at the function on the inside. That is a complete apron that is ready to rock. Next part is just to put this all together. There is nothing else to be done on this model. So I hope you come back for the assembly. Sorry to tease you with this, but I thought that peening that one hole over to, sh to assemble the crank was a good idea and counter boring and swapping out the pin for a headed pin on this gear cluster was the other enhancement. So if you're building this model, if you're following along, I hope that helps you. Anybody at PM Research might consider doing that. That's uh, that's a nice upgrade. These gears will not fall apart, nor will they bind on the bed. Once again, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out.